Once upon a time, in a time not too long ago, there was a small group of friends. What they liked more than anything in the whole wide world, and they knew for sure because they had travelled the whole wide world, was that Scotch whisky was the very best thing there was in it. And one day they had a thought. I'm sure there are other people out there who like whisky as much as we do, said one. Do you think there is a way that we could share it with them? Of course there is, said another. Let's open a special library where people can find any whisky they desire, whether it be in a bottle or a cask, and then we can sell it to them wherever they may live. And, said a third, they can keep it safe in Scotland while they wait for it to be absolutely ready, and then it'll be worth even more money. So the friends got together. They built their library and called it Cask 88, because it felt like a lucky number. Cask 88 makes sure the whisky always flows, in good times and in hard. After all, everything looks better with a dram in your hand. Hello and welcome to the Cask 88 Lock-In with me, Sam Lang. Now, Cask 88 is the home of rare and old Scotch whisky here in the heart of Edinburgh. Now, after a month of this COVID-related lockdown, I'm getting a bit fed up of just talking to myself. So I've decided I'm going to be talking to you and some special guests about whisky. This is a great idea. Now, over the next few weeks, I'm going to be sitting comfortably in this chair, passing off my facts as opinions for your edification, and uh, I'll also be joined by a few hand-selected guests who will be joining me via the very best of social distancing apps. First and foremost among these is my suave and fiery bearded Cask88 co-host and colleague, Mr. Struan Logan. How are you keeping, Struan? I'm doing good, Sam. Thanks for asking. Now, this is the Cask 88 lockdown, so I think the best thing to investigate first is which whiskies myself and Struan are locked down with. Take it away, Struan. What I went for is an absolute classic. It's a no-brainer. Uh, oh, uh, one, one moment. What? Uh, are your hands clean? <sighs> All right, then. One, two, eleven, three, twelve, thirteen, seven, eighteen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Is that enough? Sufficient. Let's go. Now, the choice of whiskey I've presented with is an absolute no-brainer. It is a Lager Villain, 16 years old. Now, if you're in the zombie apocalypse and you're a table full of weapons, this is like picking a double-barreled shotgun. Reliable, beautiful, it's a classic for a reason. Now, with this one as well, with a lot of Ailey distilleries, the good and bad side of them is they are PT as, because that's exactly what they specialise in. Now, what that can also mean is if you kind of get the flavour of it, you're just being hit over the head with smoke on a repeated basis every time you sit. Great thing about Lagavulin 116 is it's so much more going on with it. So even if you just give it a light smell, you're getting kind of that plummy, dark fruit kind of a smell on the end to it that's a lot sweeter than what you expect. And then when you actually do the important part of taking a sip of the whiskey. You've got a lot more going on there. You've got obviously the wood of it being matured there for 16 years. It's light, but still present. You've got a bit of sherry sweetness. And then the peat comes in and slaps you with it. It's still getting the full style of an Ailey, but not actually just having that as a one trick pony. The other thing about Lagavulin is it's kind of a shorthand for if you want to pretend you know about whiskies and just use this to reference. Someone presents you with something that could be amazing, could be terrible, but you want to make sure you want to know your stuff, you just go, yeah, it's all right. There's no Lagavulin 16. And they'll just go, yeah, I guess you're right. Of course, now my personal whisky choice for this lock-in is one that's quite special to me. It's this Glen Turret 26 year old from one of Scotland's oldest distilleries. Now a few years back I had my 30th birthday and maybe I was feeling a bit morbid, we can sometimes get a bit self-indulgent with the passage of time, but I thought if I want to celebrate this milestone properly then what I want is a proper 
tombstone to celebrate it with. Maybe a little overdoing it, but look at this thing. It's tall, it's inky black, it's solid. It's like the monolith from 2001 A Space Odyssey. And I like having it around, especially in these times with everything going on outside. I like to have it on my shelf, looking down at me, my own personal memento mori. So whenever I'm feeling it, I can stare it in the eye and say, not today. And then I can open it and plunder the whiskey that's inside this, let's face it, sarcophagus. Now, little confession, when I first opened this bottle on the birthday in question, I have to say I didn't actually like the whiskey all that much. It was just a bit fusty and clammy, it somehow didn't seem to be doing what I expected it to do. So a little disappointed, I put it back on the shelf and let another year pass until another birthday. And I opened it again out of some due sense of ceremony. And it was better. And I know that whiskey isn't supposed to get better in a bottle, but whether through uh, oxidation or some kind of whiskey black magic, this one had improved. Its flavors had rounded out. It had become a little sweeter. Uh, it didn't do anything super different from other whiskeys. It just seemed to do its job a little better. It had sort of notes of caramelized apples, caramelized pears, caramelized toffee and caramel. It was sweet, mild, lovely, and it got me through a few subsequent birthdays. There's not as much of it as there once was. And uh, now I think it's going to get me through this lockdown because we're looking for special occasions while we're in here. And this whiskey is definitely one of them. Hmm. Not today. Now I've used a circle of standing stones to travel back to 19th century Scotland to interview a local and find out if he has any advice for our current predicament. So what do you do if you or any of your family are ill? We drink fusky, and if you don't get better? We drink mer fusky, and if you still don't get better? We do. Wow, that advice has not aged well. We'd like to welcome Rachel McCormack, uh, a regular contributor to the BBC on matters of food and whiskey, as well as the author of Chasing the Dram, Finding the Spirit of Whiskey. She's known for pushing the envelope when it comes to drinking whiskey in different contexts, especially paired with excellent food. She may offer us a new perspective on what to do with our lockdown whiskies. So hi, Rachel, thank you very much for joining us. Hi Looks Sam, like thanks for having me. You're very much into uh, making sure that we're all eating well and we're being just a little bit more experimental with the kind of things that we eat and maybe the pairings we do with whiskey. So for those people who have uh, some things in their store cupboard, are there any interesting combinations of whiskey you think you might be able to find among the lockdown stores? One of the things, at least in Scotland, if you are buying once a week, you should still be able to get cream. So if you get like a double, if you buy double cream and then you whip up double cream and you add a bit of orange marmalade to it and if you can get it some lemon and then add just a couple of uh, tablespoonfuls of whiskey and that's called a Caledonia cream and it's a fabulous adult dessert. And the thing with that that I always find is interesting is that the whiskey that you like in the glass isn't necessarily the whiskey that you like that is your favourite in the Caledonia cream. So if you are very bored and in your house with cream and marmalade and whiskey and it's evening time and you want to have a wee experiment I would whip up the cream add some orange and marmalade put them into into wee dishes and then just add different whiskies in and see what you like so we've talked a bit about uh, the whiskies that Struan and I would like to uh, be locked in with um, and mm -hmm. I wonder if there's uh, a particular bottle of whiskey that you'd most want to spend your time with in a lockdown. Did you manage to grab a particular bottle before we all got stuck inside? Do you know, I didn't, um, but I think I would probably like the Glen Scotia Victoriana. It's quite an unusual tasting whiskey because mm. it's got that sort of almost sulfury Campbelltown taste, slightly peaty, 
and it's just it's also it's the one that I have when I go to the pot still in Glasgow with my friends. So for me as well, drinking Glen Scotia Victoriana is sitting around with my friends in the pub. Yeah, I've uh, I've had it a couple of times myself, and it always seems to offer up something a little bit new on each exploration. So even though you'd be coming back to it again and again, you're never going to be coming back to the same whiskey twice. So it feels like, um, especially if we people uh, take you up on your advice, that maybe a few habits are going to be changing in the kitchen. Um, are there any other maybe sort of habits that you could see will change? That whiskey that you've been saving for a good occasion, this is the occasion. And you have one and you sit down and you savour it and you really enjoy it. Mm. And that's what you do. You know, your lockdown whiskey is a whiskey that you are saving for a good occasion and you're not just wiring in and just getting through it. You're drinking it really slowly and really savouring it. Now, now is really not the time to go crazy. As some, someone was saying, when this is all over, we are going to have the biggest party in Scottish history. And I think until then, you have to keep yourself as happy as possible and being careful and drinking and drinking the good stuff in your house and drinking it in small amounts. And maybe saving one particular bottle of the good stuff for the party when it's over. No, I think you just buy another one. Oh, just buy another <laughs> well, Yeah, that's true. I think, I think once you can get out, just buy another one. One thing that um, whiskey definitely has going for it is uh, if you put a freeze on something somewhere, well, the whiskey is still quietly sitting in a warehouse and it's still doing the maturation that it's so famous for. So uh, even if uh, the warehouses aren't moving the whiskey around now, doesn't mean that it's not getting better waiting for the day it can be let out again. Exactly. So it is the one, one of the products that there is no danger of it running out so this is why i think you open the good stuff in your house because you can buy more as soon as you as soon as deliveries are back on board as soon as sales are back on board you can buy anything you'll be able to buy anything that you want i will say thank you very much rachel mccormack we're going to be able to do some very interesting stuff with the whiskies that we're locked up with i think um and we'll remember that key piece of advice that um you know what if you have a special bottle in the house why not use it now this is a great a time as any for it you can always get another one when uh, everything is over and we're heading uh, heading back outside thanks very much sam thank you stay well and stay indoors bye bye fascinating fascinating uh, what's that you say more guests well you shouldn't be talking to your computer you're not on skype now but I'll see what I can do. <clears throat> now I'm now joined by Felipe Schreiberg, who is a polymath of whiskey. A talented musician, one half of the Rhythm and Booze project, a whiskey correspondent for Forbes, a judge on the panel of the World Whiskey Awards, and he has a master's thesis in sustainable whiskey distillation. Felipe, thank you very much for joining us. No, thanks very much for having me. Uh, you're very generous with your introduction. Whiskey really seems to be a very big part of your life. What is it that you look for in an award-winning dram? What I like best is stuff that's big, bold, and smacks me in the face. You know, there were situations where I'm trying something that's like, this is awesome, but it's a little bit unidimensional compared to something that I might not like as much, but I can appreciate there's actually clearly sort of greater technical complexity going on here. You also organize tastings. You do big multi-sensory whiskey and uh, musical experiences when things are normal. Now you've moved uh, your tastings online. How much of a different approach is that? It's interesting. The people will get their whiskeys. So then it's translating the personal experience to a bunch of people in their own spaces staring at a small screen. And the challenge is really, how do you make that engaging? And how do you make that as personalized as possible? It's just a matter of you know ensuring that people are able to feel like they're having a cool, subjective, their own special subjective experience with the liquid. Mm. So that's great, and it's great to be able to, to do that. There is, of course, uh, another reason why you're here, and that is the musical dimension to what you do. So I understand that you're going to perform one of your songs for us. So I'll say, Felipe Schreiberg, thank you very much indeed. And I'll let you set up for the next segment. Well, thank you so much. So 
So uh, I'm going to do a traditional Delta tune uh, called Roman Tumblin. Uh, it has a reference to whiskey in it, so I felt it. it's appropriate for the occasion. Uh, here we go. <laughs> My next guest is almost here, and I need to be properly prepared and fortified. What were you thinking? <clears throat> I'm delighted to be able to talk to Mark Thompson, who for the last five years has been the Glenfiddich brand ambassador to the UK, presenting Scotland's leading single malt scotch, Tell me, Mark, is this the first time you've slowed down in five years? I, I think I've actually sped up a little bit, Sam. Ordinarily, as an ambassador, your time is split very much between uh, events, public speaking, hosting dinners, and so on and so forth. But currently, it seems it's falling more into a nine to five position. So weirdly, I'm slightly busier during the day, but I just have nothing to do at night. Uh, I find that, yeah, keeping a routine is it's actually been quite important and uh, I do try and simulate my commute, uh, just sort of take a little wander around. Have you got um, any nice walks around you there? Well, I'm a, I'm a runner and I'm in the centre of Edinburgh. It's superb, I mean, very lucky, very, very green city. Now, when the when the lockdown did start, what whiskies did you end up getting locked in with? Well, I started about a year ago an Infinity Bottle, which is basically once it gets down to a level, uh, you know, of 50 mils or something, then you're going to let it go. Yeah. Uh, either drink it and what I've started to do is put it into a, an empty bottle. That bottle constantly develops 
mm -hmm. and it'll fill up and then you'll take a few drams out and you'll top it up with something different. Now, sometimes you have a dram of it and think, my goodness, this is incredible. Yeah. And then you put something in it and it completely takes that characteristic away. I like the infinity bottle philosophy as well. It also means that you never permanently have to say goodbye to anything. There you go. Yeah. Is there anywhere uh, that you particularly miss? Any country you'd uh, basically go out to uh, as soon as you can? That question right now, it's not about the country I'd go to. I would head into the Highlands. I love hill walking. So, you know, that's what I'm missing. And luckily with this job, you get an opportunity to, you know, travel to places that perhaps are off the beaten track. But I always try and make a couple of hours of recreational time to run up a mountain or go for an open water swim or just do something that just gets you back into that the nature of everything yeah with a, with a whiskey in hand obviously there are new places that are getting involved in whiskey making japan's had a lot of success notably uh, australian whiskey is uh, really well regarded as well but are there any countries that you are keeping your eye on when it comes to uh, making their own whiskey. Last year at the whiskey show in London, the Israeli distillers, Milk and Honey, fabulous and really fun attitude. And and yet yeah, things like that where you suddenly go, that's really tasty. And of course now the whole world has changed its attitude and the, the open-mindedness to embrace this and know that it's well made and well intended. And you see some very young products coming to the market with exceptional characteristics. You mentioned Japanese, if you look at things like Chichibu, Goodness, look, look at how people are going crazy for four, five, six year olds to spit out a chichibu. And yet, years ago, if it was Japanese, it was frowned upon completely. And if it wasn't a 10 year old, there was no point in drinking it. I love the fact that New York producers yeah. are embracing the same attitude the Scots had 400 years ago mm -hmm. of just going, let's just try it and see what happens. You know, if you think back to that very rudimental time of farmers just creating what they could and it not traveling so not having a thousand people comment on it it had 30 people in a community going i like your stuff out of that we've got this thing a return to that almost where people are just saying i like it, it tastes good mm. and they're not where it came from or how old it is they're just saying that this is something i like yeah it's a very very healthy time for to be in the whiskey industry and to be a new producer Mark, you're going to be uh, sticking around with us for a little. You'll have a regular segment on the show. What can we expect from that? It's a short interview, if you like, just grabbing almost like a vox pop of people on the street, but it's not people on the street. It's going to be people at home from other ambassadors for different brands mm -hmm. to journalists or personalities from the whiskey industry, bar owners, bartenders, and just people with an interesting history and a few words of wisdom thrown in there as well, I'm sure. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. Well, Thompson, thank you very much indeed. And there it is, the first episode of the Cask 88 lock-in. Now, if you couldn't tell, we're still somewhat new at this, so do feel free to give us a helping hand along the way. Like the video, subscribe to the videos, leave a comment on this video, especially if somewhere along the way the name of your favourite distillery got mispronounced. That's always productive ground. Now, if you're feeling the lack of a drinking companion in these socially starved times, then I have a little bonus feature for you. For the next six hours, I'm going to be sitting in this chair, a dram of whiskey in my hand, far away look in my eyes, occasionally making eye contact with the camera. So why not join me? Pour yourself a dram of your favourite whiskey, put me up on your living room's largest display, and let's have a drink together. Stay well, everybody. Slanjivar.